everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Octio Studio. If you're in the United States, happy Thanksgiving. It is November 22nd, 2018. And this is my page for the day based on the prompt solar, which is what the prompt is for today. Um, this is for hashtag art journal habit, a daily art journaling challenge for the month of November. And I've been making a page and a video for each day. So today's the 22nd day. Um, solar. The first thing I thought of was solar flares, which are an environmental thing that's going on, but I couldn't really think of a way to depict that so that you would be able to see what it was. Then I thought of a play on the words, solar flare, like flare, like um, uh, coolness factor <laughs> or whatever, or sometimes the Things that you put on are called flare, or maybe you have some sort of a sunshine on your shirt and that's your flare. I don't know. Anyway, that was kind of a weird little thing that I thought of. And then I thought of all the sunshine images that we have around where I live, um, very influenced by those primitive symbols that you could find in Mexico and things like that. Um, you know, back in the days when maybe some cultures worship the sun, there's a lot of interesting sun images. And I have a new stencil, which was given to me by Cindy Utter, and her husband, Jeff, designed it. And um, I decided I wanted to use that stencil, but I wanted also to kind of depict this blanket that I used to see all the time. I don't know if we owned it or if someone else owned it, but it was... Pendleton woolen mills and um, native, you know, the native style woven blankets. And it had a primitive sun on it, but the colors weren't super bright. They were warm colors, um, but not bright. And there was, you know, borders and, and lines and rectangles. And so I decided to do a, a whole stencil page just decorating with stencils. And I got out some different ones. These are from all different companies. I think a couple of them are, are um, Stencil Girl products, uh, the one from the Utters, and then um, this one is from um, Sarah Trump Strumpet Designs Stencils. It's kind of like a, a crop circle, which I thought was kind of cool. So I'm just using Dilutions paints, and first I did some uh, like finger painting all over with a dark red, a regular red, and a gray. Then I stenciled over the top of it with those same colors, and then I brought in some gold, uh, PBO gold paint, and stenciled some of that. I like those um, things that kind of remind me of ladders, like as if you were to be climbing up to the sun sort of idea. Um, so I put those images on. Then this is the the um, sun, sun or a, maybe it's a mandala, it's supposed to be a mandala stencil, but to me it looks like one of these suns that I see around all the time. And so I decided to put that on using this uh, bronze colored texture paste. Who's that from? I know I will, I'll put it in the description box below. I know who it's from. I just can't remember right now. <laughs> uh, Come on, it's just not coming to me. Anyway, it's it's shiny bronze color. And I put this the that texture paste to the stencil so it makes like a raised image of the stencil off the page, which I thought was kind of cool. And of course I had to dry that and everything, you know, with the heat tool, which I trimmed that part of the video out. But I liked it, but the image didn't stand out that much from the background, I guess because it's a line image over a very intensely patterned background. And it's not a, it's not that much of a color contrast or anything. So I decided that I would do some additional painting, um, decorating it somehow to make it more of a focal image. So I started out with some um, deco art media fluid paints in dialeride yellow and uh, quinacridone orange. Um, painting in, then I added a little bit of white gesso and I started painting the background, trying to 
um, calm down the background. And I remembered that the blanket had a teal color with it, which went really well with the other colors that are very similar to these ones that I had used, kind of dark reds and grays and things like that. If I can, I don't know if I can, but if I can, I'll try to find a, an image that you that is a picture of a similar or the same blanket. I, I doubt that I can find that, but if, if I can, I'll try it. Um, so that you can get an idea of what my inspiration was, what my you know inspiration colors and everything were. So then I started to paint and kind of calm down the background with these different colors, adding in that teal color as well. Um, in an attempt to make the sunshine image stand out more. So kind of a little bit of like exclusion, but not completely painting out the background. I want all that pattern and color to show through that I put on so carefully with all the different stencils. I want that, you know, to still be there. I don't want to get rid of that. I just want a more subdued version of it. So I'm just adding different, um, a little bit of gesso, a little bit of the Dialeride yellow, a little bit of the quinacridone burnt orange, a little bit of the um, cobalt teal. Um, these are all uh, fluid paint from DecoArt. So it's a little bit translucent because of it's being fluid. It's not a purely opaque um, paint, which is why it's good for this. I don't have to mix it with anything really. Um, I might have added a little bit of water to the gesso, maybe, I'm not sure, but I'm liking that. It's looking better. Still not 100% um, thrilled with it, however. So I'm still going to play with it some more, still going to mess around with it. So I got some quinacridone gold, which um, I thought I might use on the rays, but they didn't look good with that. So I ended up getting some actual metallic gold and then using the quinacridone burnt orange and mixing it with a little bit of metallic gold from also from DecoArt. Um, you know, it's one of the fluids, the mixed media fluid paint. And that, that was kind of a cool look. I liked it. It kind of calmed down the pattern that was inside of the sun rays, which was distracting, I thought. And also adds a little bit of metallic. At the end of the video, you'll be able to see the metallic um, all the metallics. In video, it doesn't show up very well, but in the close-up photos, it shows up pretty well. So you'll be able to see, you know, the bronze and everything and the, the gold and all that. So then I started adding that metallic gold in other places, just kind of like as highlights um, over the dialeride yellow in the um, everywhere. Then I thought the center needed to be a different color. So I put some gesso over it and I started back in with the burnt orange. I didn't like that. I put the gesso over the top of the pretty metallic spiral thing, which because I was lazy, I thought, oh, I'll just wipe it off. It didn't wipe off. So don't do that. So back in with the burnt orange, just, you know, trying to, trying to do something. So then I thought, well, maybe I can add the metallic back in with some of this metallic wax, Inca gold stuff, and yeah, I didn't really have the same bronze color, so that really wasn't working either, but eh, a little bit better, but not great. I don't know. <laughs> this is just a process of experimentation and play, and of course, experimentation and play is exactly what art journaling is. This is supposed to be experimentation and play so that you can develop your skills and um, flush out your ideas and get your creativity moving so then you can maybe make a larger piece of art or something more um, you know whatever maybe something you're going to hang on the wall later so yeah that's what your art journaling is about also expressing your feelings um, getting out your frustrations, any of those type of things, distracting yourself. If you have pain, it's a good way to manage your pain um, by giving your mind something else to think of besides pain. So art journaling, great thing. Everyone should be doing it. Even if you don't feel like you are a creative person, this is still a great way to, 
to exercise those creative muscles and you maybe will develop into someone that you consider a creative person. I already consider you creative. I know all of you out there are very creative and you can do this. So I hope that you start if you haven't already. This challenge is a good time to start. <laughs> so then I put a little bit of that metallic gold over the swirly thing in the middle. And um, I, I thought that looked better, starting to stand out a little bit more. And then I put some teal in the center, you know, put some dots around, did all those things, making it more interesting. Then I thought, well, maybe I can get out my copper colored pen and add some detail with that. This is a PBO marker, PBO paint marker, um, different brand than my Posca ones, but this is the only copper marker that I have because Posca doesn't make a copper marker. I don't know why. Or if they don't, I haven't been able, if they do make it, I haven't been able to find it. So if anyone sees a copper marker by, by Posca, I would be very happy to purchase it. <laughs> I'd be very excited. Copper is my favorite. So then I got out my fine white and fine black tip and just add some more little dots around here and there. Just, you know, kind of like mandala painting, which is actually a meditative type of a practice. Making mandalas is very calming and it focuses your mind. So it's a pretty cool thing to do as well. Then the black. Decided I better bring in the black because ultimately how else do you make something stand out than black? <laughs> so I'm using black, still making the dots and then I circled that thing in the center and I thought that looks cool. So then I went and circled all the ones that were in the rays and those looked cool. And then the, the desire to have lines around everything <laughs> took over my mind. <laughs> this happens a lot, people. I like lines around things. And that's what prompted me to do the lines around the circles and around the rays which I think does make a huge difference in making the sunshine stand out from the background. So I'm happy I did that, even though I resist it. I resist making lines around everything. There's just some days when you just have to do it. So I just did it. So I hope that you guys are enjoying this video series each day and that you'll continue to leave me a thumbs up, comments, questions below, um, subscribe, Turn on your notification bells, share, pin, all those things. Those things help my channel and help me to know that you're enjoying um, the large amount of effort I am putting in this month <laughs> to do this. So then at the end, I made a little border to kind of coordinate with my black marker. And then I wrote the word words, uh, solar flare, not F. L-A-R-E, but F-L-A-I-R with my silly little play on words at the bottom. Highlighted that with some of the copper pin um, around it, which doesn't really show up in the video, but you can see it in the pictures. And then uh, also a little bit of that white pin. So the close-ups are coming up at the end so you can see all the metallic details and um, besides that, I think that's it for me. See you tomorrow. Thanks. Bye-bye.